So, so basically, uh, we were really interested in the idea of uh, trying to test this carbohydrate insulin hypothesis for obesity, which posits that basically um, obesity is caused primarily because of high insulin levels, which are driving fat into fat cells, starving the rest of the body, and thereby uh, uh, basically causing increased hunger and decreased energy expenditure. So one of the logical consequences of that model of obesity, if it's correct, is that if I take people who are overweight and, uh, and have a class one obesity, if I uh, then swap out, keep the calories the same, but swap out carbohydrates for fat, and in particular if you crank down the carbohydrates really low to 5% of total calories and increase fat to 80% of total calories, that you would reverse some of these things. And if I clamp um, basically the number of calories, then I'm not going to be able to test the effects on hunger, but I will be able to test the effects on energy expenditures. And so if the insulin hypothesis is uh, the correct hypothesis, what would the expectation of this study have been? Right, so there are two predictions. One, because you decrease the number of carbs dramatically, you should decrease insulin secretion. That should release the fat from the fat cells. You should therefore get increased fat loss from the body, and you should also then, because you've relieved the starvation of, of uh, this internal starvation, you should increase energy expenditure. And previous uh, folks have suggested that that should be 400 to 600 calories a day of extra energy expenditure. And that would explain for them why ketogenic low-carb diets would be beneficial for weight loss beyond calories a calorie. Right, essentially the idea that I can eat whatever I want and I can actually eat maybe even more calories slightly than I was eating on a previous high carbohydrate diet and yet still lose weight and body fat. You can't get that for free so you've got to increase energy expense. And so how long, sorry, how long was this? This was a one-month study? This is a two-month two month. Two month inpatient metabolic ward study. People uh, in 17, uh, overweight in class 1, obese subjects. I know I just screwed up my first uh, That's okay. First it language. happens it's, to the it's, best of us. Okay. <laughs> and so what, what were the findings? Let's go through. Yeah. I'm going to just now sure. shift over to, yeah, yeah. to your, so you want to use your hands to point the Okay, things. so here is the uh, study design basically. Two uh, months onside uh, metabolic ward. The, the, uh, basically the first period is a baseline diet, high carbohydrate diet, 25% of total calories coming from sugar. Um, and every, t every uh, week they spend two days inside a metabolic chamber uh, and basically what we do is over the first period of time we adjust the number of calories to match uh, what they were burning inside the chamber so that we would put them in energy balance inside the chamber and then we clamp the calories for the rest of the period of time and switch them to an 80% carb uh, 80 fat 5% carbohydrate diet keeping protein clamped all the way along and there's no opportunity to cheat here these are people who are uh, sadly for them I imagine in a locked ward in a sense they are in a locked ward in that sense they uh, can't can have visitors but they have to have their visitors in public they have to eat all of their food and who front. does this what who, who, are the, who did you find to actually do this we, for, for we, two months we found 17 very motivated people <laughs> to do this um, they, Amazing. They, they were compensated let's I, just say I that they were, this could not have been a cheap study so then yeah. results wise let's talk talk us through the results okay so one of the interesting things was that despite the fact that we were uh, trying to put them in energy balance in the chamber and we were actually able to do that um, outside the chamber they actually burn more calories not too surprising in retrospect but we actually were surprised by the magnitude of how many more calories they were burning outside the chamber upwards of 500 calories a day more outside the chamber than inside the chamber so what that meant was that we were feeding them more or less in balance in the chamber but we were under feeding them outside the chamber. and and that's simply because they were in the chamber and weren't doing yeah, it's, very it's much. a small it's, it's, room they can't exactly exercise a great deal and, exactly and so that's the other part we tried to clamp the physical activity as much as possible three uh, 30 minute sessions at fixed wattage on cycle ergometry every day uh, for the entire period of time and I imagine to, unlimited bandwidth for their internet connections? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Lot, lots of television, lots of internet. Um, okay, yeah. so then back to the results. Okay, so what happened? Uh, the blue period of time, this is the last 15 days of the baseline run-in high carbohydrate diet, so they're losing weight slightly. It's a roughly 300 calorie a day negative energy balance overall. They're losing fat over this period of time. We switched them to the low carbohydrate diet. Uh, they lose a, a good chunk of, uh, of weight, uh, about 1.6 kilos right away. Interestingly, and I think most importantly for the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis, is that the fat mass slowed. So the loss 
the loss of fat mass slowed down yes, exactly. on a low carb, high fat diet. That's correct, yes. Which um, is certainly not what would be predicted. The prediction was you drop insulin, you increase lipolysis, you increase the amount of fat burning, and therefore you should lose, you should get, release those trapped fat from the fat cells, you'd reduce body fat. This is measured by DEXA. But that's certainly not what was found here. That was not what was found here. Okay. We actually saw a slowing of the fat loss. In fact, it took the full 28 days on the ketogenic diet to lose the same amount of fat as the first 15 days. Sorry, so the, the first 15 15 days of the control diet, the baseline run-in diet, people yep. lost as much fat as the study days. diet with the low-carb, high-fat. That's correct, but more weight. Right. So they and so they lost from lean mass. Yes, and in fact, one of the things that we measured, which is not shown on the poster, is we measure 24-hour uh, urinary nitrogen excretion, which is an index of how much protein is being utilized. That went up over the first period of the ketogenic diet, so they're actually losing protein as well as water. Now, how fast was that weight loss? And so it looks like it's only just two kilograms over 28 days, so it's basically a pound and change a week. Yeah, but you can see that this uh, uh, this period of time, right, uh, very shortly after introducing the ketogenic diet at time zero, you get this rapid weight loss, which is then relatively stable. So the, the only reason I was asking is yep. having seen studies in the past mm -hmm. where rapid loss was associated with disproportionate loss of lean tissue. Right. So I wondered whether or not that was what we were seeing, but it doesn't seem like they lost fast enough for that to have happened. Right. I think that what you're really seeing here is you're seeing a, it's not a huge amount of protein loss. You're seeing a transient loss of protein, which is uh, essentially slowing down the fat loss transiently and then that sort of picks back up again after you've got that transient flood of uh, protein and we know that insulin for example does suppress proteolysis so it's not that surprising based on the physiology what I'm showing here is the fact that we've actually done what we've said this is 24 hour C peptide in the urine it's an index of how much insulin is secreted over the course of the day you can see that that drops in 50 by 50 percent in the ketogenic diet so we're actually doing what we said that we were doing. Okay, we've got three more graphs yep. to model sure. through for, for the people who are listening. There are 14 people. 14, listening. awesome. All right, so so really quickly, basically the energy expenditure in the chamber, so this is the total number of calories burned while they were spending those, those two days a week inside the chamber. You can see that the induction of the ketogenic diet does cause a slight increase. It's been very slight increase. Not as much as would have been expected. Nowhere near. So this looks expected. like to me from here with the error bars, yeah. of course, but it looks about, about 100 calories a day extra on a ketogenic diet as far as burning goes. And then it goes away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, not what we would have hoped for. Over. Yeah, exactly, and you can see that there's a big chunk of that is in sleeping metabolic rate, which again wanes away over time. Um, and then finally, they are shifting quickly to uh, to fat oxidation. Uh, so, so there is the a question from Catherine. She yes. wants to know if it goes completely away, but it looks like you haven't done a long enough no. study to necessarily conclude one way or the other. Maybe yeah. it goes back up, maybe it goes down, who knows? maybe it stops. Yeah, who knows, but right. I guess one would have to postulate some very interesting physiological phenomenon to suggest that it goes back up. I, I'm sure people will. Everybody will. <laughs> it's never gonna be long enough, it's never gonna be extreme enough. Um, interestingly, from the purpose of our last paper where the complaint was that nothing would, that you would get an increase further uh, augmentation of fat oxidation after the first week. And so briefly though, yeah. for people who hadn't seen yeah. the first paper, the first paper was criticized because it was too short. short. Too short. And so the and thinking not, was that they weren't fully induced into... They weren't fat adapted. They weren't fat adapted in, in yes. a ketogenic state. So that would not be the case here because right. most people would agree that fat adaptation occurs before two months. Or, or at least one month, right? right? So this is, they're on the ketogenic diet for oh, one month. Oh, I'm sorry, that's period. right, yes. But interestingly, you'll notice that all of the adaptation occurred within the first week. So 24-hour RQ goes down and it stays down. It does not take another nosedive as one might have hypothesized if you had further at fat adaptation after the first week. You got all of it within the first week. So our conclusions are, you know, this is an inpatient controlled isocaloric ketogenic diet got small increases in energy expenditure, basically at the limits of detection using current state-of-the-art methods. Um, despite the rapid and substantial drop in insulin secretion and uh, an increase in fat oxidation, uh, we saw no augmentation of body fat loss with this uh, low insulin diet. In fact, we saw slowing of body fat loss with the, uh, with the ketogenic diet. And uh, really, 
our data don't support any sort of large magnitude changes that are really physiologically significant in terms of augmentation of energy expenditure that have been hypothesized in the past to be the metabolic advantage of uh, so low question from the, one of the people who is watching was whether or not what the average weight or BMI was for the participants because it's 17 uh, men with yeah. overweight or obesity but yeah. it doesn't say what, what yeah, they sort of were it's a, it's a good point that was uh, 29 was the was the mean BMI they were all class 1 obese or um, had, were overweight so gotcha. the range was uh, 25 to uh, 35 and so based on this I I take it that this has not increased your um, buy-in for the insulin hypothesis in terms of what I, th I think the combination of these two studies on the metabolic side of things basically falsify the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis so that is a, a very uh, very firm statement, and I, I won't disagree with you, but uh, it's, uh, when's the paper coming out? People want to know. It's a good question. So this is, uh, it was just resubmitted to the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition after a round of relatively positive reviews, so I would anticipate probably hearing something positive within the next few weeks. And uh, there was a question was, does this mean the hypothesis is now over? I suspect you would say yes. Um, from, I still think that there might be something interesting to say about appetite. It was something that was uh, was measured very indirectly in this study, which I'm not presenting the data yet. Certainly my clinical experience with ketosis would say that it, it does indeed help with appetite. The issue, of course, that I have with it is that I can't find people who want to live like that forever, which, which ultimately is, is what's point. required right. if exactly. you want to keep the weight off forever. If, if you're only interested in losing weight transiently, then maybe a very low-carbohydrate ketogenic diet is the way to go. But as Yoni points out, you have to be willing to do something permanently to persistently uh, change your change your behavior to, to keep the weight off perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. I appreciate that. And yep. for our second, each of us mutually uh, periscope. I don't think we did that bad. Oh, wait. So, uh, <laughs> so the question from, from Catherine was whether or not total protein intake. I mean, I do think protein is uh, important in satiety. Um, but I think ketosis may have a unique contribution to satiety as well. At least that's been my experience. But I'd love to see uh, some head-to-heads in that regard as well. I think that's an interesting point, and one of the things that's uh, that's also been shown, and we review this in the papers, that uh, this is the very first time reducing carbohydrates has been shown to increase energy expenditure, even though it's a very minor amount. Um, everybody else who's ever shown an increase in energy expenditure, with uh, including Ludwig's group, um, has had to increase protein at the same time, and we know that protein is thermogenic. So one of the questions is, um, is there really a physiologically significant increase in energy expenditure that can be achieved with carbohydrate restriction. I think this basically answers the question. The answer is probably not. Terrific. My phone's about to die. Thank you, okay. Kevin. Great. Thanks. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good to see you.